Today we have reached Christmas Day. After the four long weeks of Advent, we have finally arrived at the day, the celebration, the fact, the feast that we've been longing for. It hasn't been easy during Advent to long for something because the market tells us we ought to obey our thirst, that we shouldn't ever put off gratification of ourselves. But Advent is about yearning and being aware of those deep things, those deep hungers that we have in our hearts. So I invite you to join me over the next almost half an hour as we reflect on some elements of the Christmas message and particularly on the idea of Jesus described in the scriptures as being Emmanuel, God with us. And um, St John also has a similar phrase when he talks about the word being made flesh and dwelling among us, pitching his tent among us. I think it's useful as we celebrate these Christmas stories to move away from the notion we have of a rather static crib where everything is there as if it weren't moving. But in fact, the whole discovery of Emmanuel was the result of journeying by a whole series of people. Mary and Joseph journeyed in hope and probably in trepidation. Joseph came along faithful to the end, but not quite sure what he was doing, but determined to do his best as a man of honor. And then of course we have the shepherds who were visited out in the fields, not understanding at all what they were being told by the angel, and yet journeying down to Bethlehem, away from their normal place on the hillsides into the town where they would have been looked down upon. But they were coming because they had been amazed by the angels and were amazed what they discovered after their little journey to the to the child Jesus. Then of course we have the famous Magi, sometimes called the wise men, the Magi, who journeyed one step at a time, guided only by a little star. So all these all these people are journeying to discover Emmanuel, God with us because all the roads are leading to Bethlehem and ultimately they're going away from Bethlehem as well. They're all leading to that insignificant child, the little nobody, inconveniently born of strangers in a back street somewhere in Bethlehem. So today invites us to acknowledge God with us. Can you spend some time with me as we reflect on this Emmanuel, this God with us, this God who became flesh and dwelt among us, this God who has pitched his tent in our midst. I'd like to read that passage from the beginning of St John's Gospel, where it talks about the word being in the beginning and yet being made flesh and dwelling among us. And we can never cease to be amazed at the miracle of that divine presence taking human form in our world, being God with us, with us on our journeying. So I read this opening passage from chapter one of St John's Gospel. Listen to it carefully and see if there are any words that resonate in your heart today, any that hadn't struck you before. And if they do, stay with those words because that's what the Lord is calling you to pray about on this Christmas day. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life. And this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to testify to the light, the truth.
true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by human decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. That is where St John's Gospel begins. And everything else that happens in St John's Gospel in the life of Jesus is a revelation, is an unfolding, are signs of who that Jesus is who was with the Father in the beginning and has now become flesh and dwelt among us. So I can invite you now to spend a few minutes with each of these characters whom I've mentioned that we find in the Gospels. All those who encountered God with us, the one whom we, or they discovered on Christmas Day and whom we are invited to discover as God with us every day. Think of Joseph in Patrice Cordy, that beautiful letter from Pope Francis on St. Joseph. He said, St. Joseph reminds us that those who appear hidden or in the shadows can play an incomparable role in the history of salvation. We sometimes assume it's only the, the big people, the famous people, the one who leave a mark apparently, are the ones who can contribute anything to the world or to God's work. And Joseph reminds us that those who appear hidden or in the shadows can play an incomparable role in the history of salvation. So who was this Joseph and what does Pope Francis tell us about this Joseph who had to encounter Emmanuel, not only on that night in Bethlehem, but through the years that Jesus was alive and Joseph was alive with him. He was divinely inspired to be a fool, to accept Mary, and her pregnancy in strange circumstances. But he stayed faithful to her, stayed faithful to Jesus. And Pope Francis talks about him being a beloved father. You can work on the assumption that Jesus must have known something of who God the Father was through the lens of his own experience of a beloved father in Joseph. Tender and loving, he's described by Pope Francis. Obedient doing the right thing when the angel in dreams appears to him and tells him to do apparently mad things, accepting of the situation, not complaining, knowing that God was in the middle of it. Creatively courageous, Pope Francis says, having to find solutions to difficult situations. Working, a working man who put his body and soul and heart into all that he did. And then Pope Francis says, and one who was quite prepared to live in the shadows. Not in the shadows of death, but live in the shadows of life. And we spend a few moments with Joseph, being amazed at this Emmanuel, this child, this one who has fulfilled the promises, who is now lying in a manger in Bethlehem. And we come with the heart of Joseph, the heart of a father to see this child Jesus God with us and then we have Mary who also plays such a, a central role in the whole life of Jesus presented in the gospel um, at the Annunciation as full of grace and by Elizabeth at the visitation as blessed among women. Those are the words of the gospel. These are not some sort of strange Catholic beliefs. Hail full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. She knows that the whole gospel is focused 
not on her, but on Jesus. Yes, on her collaboration, but her shrugging of the shoulders and saying, let it be done to me according to your will, even if she has no idea what the Lord is asking her to do, like so many other great prophets and saints. And she realizes that she's giving herself to a God and giving up control of her life and her plans. She gives all glory to God. And she's presented in the scriptures, not as some sort of female goddess, but as the first of the human race to be saved through the power of her son. She has many things she knows to ponder in her hearts, in her heart. And when um, Elizabeth praises her, all she can say is, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my saviour. Spend a few minutes praying with Mary in front of this little child, saying those words, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my saviour. Imagine the joy of Mary before Emmanuel. Imagine what's going on in her own heart. Imagine the memories that she will ponder in her heart through all the, the life, death and resurrection of Jesus and the expansion of the early church, all of which began in such a quiet, secret way with the angel Gabriel. Joseph who travelled to Bethlehem and there discovered Emmanuel. Mary, who travelled with Emmanuel to Bethlehem and then brought him into the world. The shepherds, like Mary, they must have wondered why they were being called. They lived on the edge of Israeli society with the animals. They came with an openness to being amazed. As we try to view this strange child and the message of the angel that has brought them down to Bethlehem, can we reflect with them how God so often breaks into human lives in many strange and unpredictable ways? Think of saints that have been called. Think of little people <clears throat> like the shepherds who are just amazed. They can't understand. Be amazed before Emmanuel. And then we also hear the stories of the Magi, the wise men as they're called, traditionally three in number, but we're not told that there are three. We are told that there's gold, frankincense and mirror, but not that there are three of them. They follow a little star, probably assumed by some people to be half mad. A little star, what does it lead to? King Herod's palace? No leads only to the tiny Christ in Bethlehem. And they are not distracted on the way as they keep their eyes fixed on the star. They know that there are signposts along the road that will lead them towards Bethlehem and then to the stable where the child is to be found. So they, the saints of all sorts know that they want to be companions to us, not substitute gods on the journey. They are those who who point the way for us. And imagine the amazement on the part of the Magi to think they are coming to find the King of the Jews and find a helpless child with two poor parents. But then their wisdom to recognize that God is in this child. This is Emmanuel. And they do not heed what Herod has told them. Instead, they go back home by a different way for they have been changed immeasurably by what they've seen. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, as we wonder and hesitate to believe, like the shepherds of Bethlehem, fill our hearts with joy as we recognise in the helpless babe the revelation of your love. A new and radiant vision of your glory, filled with wonder at the nearness of God, filled with wonder at the nearness of God to us in Mary's newborn child. May we now offer him our praise, worship and thanksgiving and give him the love and loyalty of our hearts. And may the light of your word guide us to him as the star guided the Magi. Make us generous with the gifts you have given us, just as the Magi were generous. 
teach us to ponder all these things in our hearts as Mary did. This we ask through Emmanuel, Christ our Lord. Amen. So we've spent a little bit of time journeying to find Emmanuel, God, with us. And it's lovely to imagine that scene in Bethlehem over those strange days. But we, we have to recognise that we too are called to encounter Emmanuel, God, with us. Because all those characters had to journey away beyond where they felt comfortable, to step out into the, into the deep, into the unknown, because they were called to do so. So the beginning of, of the Gospel is full of journeying. Jesus' journey then to Jerusalem and his public ministry follows on from that. The message of the early church and the Acts of the Apostles going out from Jerusalem the whole way to, to Rome. Our Christian story that we celebrate moves us from a little child, an insignificant baby in Bethlehem, through an abandoned criminal on Calvary and a cold tomb, to the message that goes to the ends of the earth. So we will go nowhere if we stay put. That was the message of Pentecost Sunday. Start journeying with the Lord whom you encountered. He is Emmanuel with you on your journeying, not just while you sit quietly looking at him. We are a pilgrim people, that image of the promised land being always in front of the people on the Exodus and never behind them is one that speaks to our generation as well. We are a pilgrim people and God is Emmanuel travelling with his, with his pilgrim people. God's with us on that journey. He's with us sacramentally in little signs such as water and oil and bread and wine. So the characters of, of, of Bethlehem invite us to have eyes and hearts for the little things that reveal God. The little God who came in Jesus in Bethlehem seems harmless and almost hard to believe in the sacraments of the church, in the word of God. And yet that is where God is revealed to us. That's where Emmanuel is. That's why the sacraments are such important nourishment on our journey. We're a journeying people, remember. God journeys with us in word and in sacrament and invites us to listen to him, to engage with him, to be grateful for him, to marvel at him, to allow our hearts to be formed by him, just as Joseph and Mary and the shepherds and the Magi did. But it's important never to think of sacraments, that presence of God with us, as being something. There's that beautiful document that Pope John Paul II, St. John Paul II, published at the beginning of 2001, um, Novo Millennio Ineunte, the beginning of the new millennium. And he says that at the heart of who we are as a Christian people in the 21st century, ours is the question that the Greeks ask Philip in uh, the 12th chapter of St. John's Gospel. He want to see Jesus. And Pope John Paul II invited us to contemplate the face of love as Pope Francis calls it, the face of the Father's mercy. We were invited to contemplate the face of sorrow in Emmanuel, who is God with us as well. That's part of his ministry, that's part of his mission. And we're invited to contemplate the face of the risen one. To contemplate. To allow our hearts to be formed by the mystery of that Emmanuel who is revealed to us as we contemplate, as we pray. In fact, Pope John Paul II said that all we do in church has to promote what he calls genuine schools of prayer. We're not activists. We are invited to contemplate Emmanuel. Yes, in Bethlehem. Yes, in his public ministry. Yes, on the cross. Yes, in his resurrection. We're invited to contemplate him and to contemplate the one who reveals the Father um, in a way that has a spirituality of what Pope John Paul II calls a spirituality of communion, that it develops a communal search, us together searching for the mystery of God among us, Emmanuel. 
that's not just a theological problem, not even just a question of nice spiritual prayers. It's a, ch a challenge for us as a church on our synodal journey. In the midst of all the agendas and all the identity politics, listen to me, you must do this, this is the way forward. If you don't do that, you're wasting your time. One question is, where is Christ's little voice? The little voice of Emmanuel calling us. How can we ensure that we are a people who develop contemplative hearts that listen for the little voice of Emmanuel? To ensure that the voice of Emmanuel is placed at the centre of all that we do. Because the early church discovered, as Mary and Joseph and the Magi and the shepherds had to discover, that God is with us on our journey. He's with you on your journey. He's leading, he's nudging. But he asks us to be open to be touched by that presence of the divine voice. To be prepared to look for little things and to believe that God is in the little things. Just as Emmanuel was in the little things in Bethlehem and on the awful vision of the cross. So the prayer for our synodal pathway that's come out from Pope Francis, can we pray that together that we might be a people who journey with Emmanuel, who contemplate Emmanuel, who listen for the voice of Emmanuel, who want to know where the Lord is leading us, just as Joseph was able to be open to the, the dreams that he was asked to take on board. Then we pray that the Holy Spirit came upon Mary will come upon us and that we will be sensitive to listen for the voice of the Lord not to be afraid of what might seem to be crazy decisions because God will lead us as he led Joseph and Mary and the Magi to discover where Emmanuel is. Emmanuel is hidden in our midst so we pray we stand before you Holy Spirit as we gather together in your name with you alone to guide us Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. Yes, we are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path or partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. So as a journeying people, accompanied by Emmanuel, God with us, and we pray. The response to each of our prayers is Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come. The word of God existed before the creation of the universe, yet was born among us in time. We pray and worship him as we cry out in joy, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come. You are the eternal word of God who flooded the world with joy at your birth. Fill us with joy by the continuous gift of your life. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come. You saved us and by your birth revealed to us the faithfulness of the Lord. On our journey, help us to be faithful to the promises of our baptism. Maranatha, Come, Lord Jesus, come. You are the King of heaven and earth who sent messengers to announce peace to all. Let our lives be filled with your peace. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus, come. You are the true vine that brings forth the fruit of life. Make us branches of the vine bearing much fruit. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus, come. And can we pause for a few moments to bring our own prayers this Christmas day, on this the first of the 12 days of Christmas, our prayers for our own spiritual journey, our prayers that we will have hearts to recognise Emmanuel in our midst, that we will have hearts that see God in little things and little people, in the Josephs hiding on the margins 
on the Mary who is scorned by many of her own contemporaries, on the shepherds ignored, on the magi, the men from afar, the aliens, the immigrants. And can we pray the, the one prayer that Jesus taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. O God, who gladden us year by year as we wait and hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Thank you for being with me through, through these simple reflections on Emmanuel, God with us, for this Christmas day. May it be a blessed day for you. And I ask the Lord to bless you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And may Almighty God bless you, make his face to shine upon you, be with you today and all the days of your lives, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you have a blessed Christmas, and enjoy all the twelve days of Christmas. For Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. God bless you.